Hey folks, I have a cool new gadget to review today. Uh, this is the Odroid Go Advanced Black Edition. Uh, it's a retro handheld that just came out a few weeks ago. I've been having a ton of fun with it, and we're going to take a closer look. If you're not familiar with the Odroid name, they specialize in small single board computers, kind of like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in general, their offerings are a little bit more powerful, a little bit more expensive than the Pi, uh, but it's the same idea, and it's the same uh, community-driven development effort. So they rely on the community to release new Linux distributions, new add-ons, uh, tips and hacks. Uh, it's a very open source, uh, community-driven mentality. So they released the their first iteration of this console, the Go Advanced, late last year, and it sold out almost immediately. Uh, there were two big draws to the console at that time. Uh, first is the performance that you got for your dollar. Retro gaming handhelds in the $50 to $70 range traditionally can emulate through the 32-bit era pretty well. So your Super Nintendos, your Genesis, uh, your Neo Geos, they can generally emulate those consoles with, with very little struggle. Conversely, they don't handle the 64-bit the era pretty much at all. So Nintendo 64 is poorly emulated, if at all, on those consoles. Dreamcast, poorly emulated, if at all. PSP, pretty much not emulated at all on, on any of those consoles in that $50 to $70 range. Uh, the Odroid Go Advance can handle a good portion of these 64-bit titles. I've had some pretty good luck with not all but many Nintendo 64 games. Uh, I've had some pretty good luck with not all but at least a few Dreamcast games. Even a PSP game or two uh, works pretty well on this console. So it definitely has more juice in it than most of the other consoles in its price range. The second big draw for this console is that you put it together yourself. Uh, it literally comes in a box of pieces that you, you you put them all together. And now it's not complicated. Uh, it's, you know, a screwdriver and, and some tweezers are about the only thing you're going to need. Uh, but it's great to, to get your hands inside of this thing and know exactly how it's put together. Um, it's cool for the maker community. But the added real benefit of this is that all of these parts now are replaceable and interchangeable. If you break a button, go buy a button. If you break a screen, go buy a screen. Most consoles in this price range, what you buy is what you get. And if you break it, you buy another one. So the original Advance came out late last year. Uh, it sold out almost immediately. They had a bunch of back orders pushing into early this year. Like, I don't think they ever actually sent out a second round of the original Advance. Uh, I think they just moved all those orders over to the new Black Edition, which does have some substantial improvements. The first improvement is that they replaced a barrel charging connector with a USB-C charging port. Fantastic. Uh, the second one is that they added Wi-Fi directly in the device. You needed a dongle uh, for, uh, for Wi-Fi before. Uh, they added L2 and R2 buttons. Fantastic. Uh, so it is a pretty hefty upgrade over the original, and it's the same price the original was. So as I said, you have to build this yourself, um, but it, it's, it's a pretty easy process, and they have a video on their site that walks you through step by step. Like You literally see hands putting this thing together, all you got to do is mimic what they're doing. It should not be, uh, don't be intimidated by having to put it together. It's a very easy process. Uh, it can be a little tricky feeding the right cables through the right holes, uh, but it's nothing you're not going to be able to figure out. The only issue I encountered when I was putting mine together uh, is that uh, there's double-sided tape that goes around the outside of the LCD protector, uh, and when I pulled off the backing, it pulled the tape off as well and kind of got stuck to itself. So I had to cut out some pieces of, of, uh, of tape that was kind of ruined, uh, so I only have like tape running along the tops and the bottom. You can't even tell. Like it, it's, it was not a big deal. Uh, and if I really wanted to, to you know, get a screen with the full ring of tape around it, I can get one off their site for like four bucks. Uh, that's the joys of, of having a, an open source console that you you can put together and source new parts for. The other notable thing about this console is that it does not come with an SD card at all. Uh, many consoles will come with a small, almost useless card. Like if you're getting a 16 gig card or a 32 gig card, uh, th that'll get you through, that'll get you started, and at least you could turn the thing on when you pull it out of the box. Uh, you don't get that with the Odroid, you're gonna have to have your own card. Fine, go out and get yourself a 128 gig card for 20 bucks or something like that. They're, they're, they're very cheap, uh, and uh, it's better than the junk that another console would ship with. So. Negative, sure, but not that big a deal. The overall build quality of the device is just okay. Uh, now, we have to consider that they had to design and ship something that a person could put together. So, um, 
some some uh, uh, simplicity in the design is to be expected, uh, but it's really like this this two shell design, this you know front and back shell design. Um, it's not terrible, but it's also a little chintzy looking. Uh, the buttons are nothing to write home about. Uh, like the speaker cover is just holes drilled through the shell. Uh, there's not a lot of of you know quality fit and finish on the device. Uh, but it does, you know, it gets the job done and it does play well. Uh, th there's some odd nuances, like when you, th where you put in the SD card here, it's literally just a slot. Like, it's this big gaping hole that the SD card slides into, and it doesn't, it's not like it, uh, it's, it doesn't spring lock, it doesn't, you know, there's no, nothing to tell you that it's fully inserted, it just kind of slides into the hole and, and sits there exposed, uh, you know, that's, not not great, I would say. There's this hole on the left side. It's it's just a hole. It, it doesn't seem to serve any purpose. Now I did see in the disassembly instructions they want you to stick a screwdriver in there, and that's where you start to pry the case apart. But it seems weird having a three quarter inch by you know maybe a quarter inch hole just in the side of the box. It's it's strange. Um, there are these odd. Uh, it looks like they were they were maybe intending to put a component on this side. There's some cutouts in the plastic that look like this could be punched out or something like that. Uh, very very strange. There's there's a pin header just exposed on the bottom. Maybe it'll be useful for something someday, and maybe it's a brilliant decision. Uh, but the first impression is that it's kind of a a hackery. Uh, cheaply made the device, and it is it is cheaply made. You know, it's it's just a couple of shells of plastic. Now, if you compare it to something like the Pocket Go, the Pocket Go looks like a better built device. Uh, you know, there's there's kind of multi um, shells. Uh, you know, you have a white shell in front and back. You have the ring around the side. Looks kind of like an older iPhone. Um, there's no odd gaps in it. It has dual SD cards, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's a you know a, a actually a battery door so there's a you know an easily replaceable battery it looks like it's a better built device uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the odroid versus the pocket go in a bit the screen in the odroid is only a tf panel which is kind of surprising because it looks amazing i definitely would have thought this was an ips panel had you not told me that it was a tf panel uh, it's 320 by 480 which is pretty darn good resolution that beats out the pocket go and the rg350 uh, so overall i'm I'm really impressed with the screen on this thing. It's bright, it has good viewing angles. It's, it's kind of hard to beat. So while it may not look that awful impressive, how, how does it control? That's, that's far more important than, than just how the thing looks, right? Uh, and honestly, I, I kind of like how everything feels. Uh, I know there's been a lot of complaints about um, the pressure required on the D-pad, but I kind of like that positive resistance. It, it feels good to me, especially on older titles. Uh, the buttons are nothing to write home about, but they're fine. Uh, they, they don't feel any better or any worse than the Pocket Go. Um, they're not as, as quiet or as smooth as like a Switch or something like that, but they're entirely serviceable, uh, so I have no complaints about that. Uh, I really like the analog stick. One of the big problems I have with the Pocket Go is that the analog stick is the uh, uh, the parallel sliding stick. Uh, the, the stick doesn't actually uh, pivot. It just slides, uh, kind of like a, a PSP thumbstick, uh, whereas this is an actual tilting thumbstick. Um, and it feels, the, the thumbstick feels pretty good. I, I, I'm pretty impressed by this, this little tiny thumbstick. Uh, I don't like the L2 and R2 buttons. They made those little tiny, you know, they're, I, they're added after the fact, of course, uh, and they feel like it. little no travel tactile buttons kind of up here shoved on the top. Um, but other than that, other than the, the L2 and R2, uh, all the buttons feel pretty good. Uh, there's kind of slow response from all these option buttons at the bottom of the screen. Uh, they work fine. Uh, and, and, you know, they're start and select during a game. It's not like they have much other purpose. Uh, so the fact that they're you know not as springy as a normal button doesn't really affect me. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the controls, especially compared to like the Pocket Go. So on the software side, that's where this little guy really excels. Now, Odroid already has an abundant history of community-driven development. There's a lot of Linux distributions, a lot of software in general that runs on their single board computers. Uh, and while the Go Advance in, in the Go Advance Black Edition may be a little bit behind the curve since they are so new, uh, there's already multiple distributions set up for this thing. And they are better looking and more powerful than what you get on the Pocket Go and the RG350. So I've tried five of them myself so far, uh, and that's Retro Roller, MULEC, Retro Arena, 
uh, the manufacturer suggested Ubuntu 20 version um, and uh, Batisera. And each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, for the most part, they're all going to run the same emulators. They're probably, you know, most of them are going to run the same emulation backend. Um, so it's really a matter of who has the best, you know, themes, who has the best control layout, who has the best default emulator settings, uh, that kind of thing. You're not going to see a dramatic difference in performance between any of these distributions, assuming you know, you're running the latest versions and they're using the latest versions of these emulation cores. Botticera just seemed like it was the shortest between install the thing and play games that look the way I expect them to look. Uh, but, you know, to each their own. The, you, you, the, the great thing about this device is that you have a lot of different options and they're all free. It, you know, it's not like anybody's charging for any of this distribution. So, you know, spend a, an hour, install them on your stick, give it a go and see what works. So my experience so far with the emulators has been pretty great. Uh, everything up through the 32-bit era plays exactly how you'd expect it to. There is one exception, and somebody pointed this out on Reddit. Uh, the Super Nintendo emulators do struggle a little bit. Uh, and if you pick the right emulator and you turn off this rewind feature, they're back up at 60 frames per second. Um, it was odd, though, seeing the, su the you know, substantially more powerful hardware in the Odroid running Super Nintendo games at lower frame rates than the, the weaker Pocket Go V2. Uh, but, uh, you know, a tweak here or there, and you're back up to full speed. And also keep in mind that the performance you're seeing today is based on hardware that was only released six or seven months ago. Uh, there's a lot of optimization that's still left to be done on, on this console. PlayStation games are pretty easy to emulate. Uh, the Pocket Go handles them pretty well. The Odroid Go Advanced Black Edition handles them even better. Not a hiccup anywhere. Uh, even the harder to emulate games like uh, Bloody Roar uh, ran just fine. You know, no stutters, no... Uh, even the, the, the graphic glitches and sound glitches were to a minimum. Uh, so very good performance with PlayStation. Now when we get into the 64-bit era, uh, I've been pleased with what you get out of the handheld. It's shocking to see a device that is this size playing Dreamcast games. Uh, Dreamcast is one of my favorite consoles of all time. I, I really feel like it got short shrifted. Uh, so to be able to pick up and play some Power Stone, uh, some Soul Calibur, um, Virtua Tennis was something that I was really hoping would run pretty well, but it's it's not not hitting the frame rate marks that it needs to. Uh, but to to be able to play those games at all on this device has been pretty fantastic. Uh, in the N64 world, you know, Super Mario World runs pretty darn well. Uh, the Tony Hawk series runs pretty darn well. Um, things like GoldenEye do not. For some reason, GoldenEye is difficult to emulate. Even on PCs, it seems like people struggle to get that to run well. PlayStation Portable, on the other hand, was more misses than hits, but there were a couple of games that played pretty well. Uh, with a little bit of frame skip, I could get OutRun running pretty well. Uh, Patapon, which is kind of a 2D game. It, it ran fine. Uh, a lot of fun with that one. Uh, the more complex games, Wipeout was ran very poorly. Uh, Ridge Racer, Need for Speed, they ran very poorly. Uh, so for the most part, uh, uh, the, the PSP needs some work, uh, but the fact that it was able to run anything was, was great. I've been talking about them a lot throughout this review, and in that $50 to $70 range, uh, the Go Advance competes with the Pocket Go and the RG350. Those are the popular consoles in that price range. And they're, they're very similar consoles on, on the inside. They're, the build quality is completely different, but from the processor GPU, uh, the performance expectations uh, for, for each of the emulators are all very similar. They run the same emulator software. Uh, they're pretty much the same device in a different shell. So I said it earlier in the review, but I think the Pocket Go is a great looking device. Uh, and I also like the button layout quite a bit. Not so much the, the four face buttons and the, the D-pad, that's pretty much the same between the two. Uh, but the positions of the accessory buttons, menu select start, uh, the volume controls, the, the shoulder buttons I think are better on the Pocket Go. Uh, however, I do have significant control issues with mine. Uh, first, the buttons, when you depress the buttons, you will feel them click, but they won't always register until you really put some pressure on them. Uh, so that leads me to really like you know, smacking on these buttons to make sure that they're registering every time when I'm, when I'm pushing them. Uh, the second problem I have is that my analog stick is always pushing slightly up. Uh, so in games that, that read and use the analog stick, I'm, I'm always moving forward, and I haven't found a software or hardware solution to that problem yet. 
So now once you get into more modern consoles, that's where these two consoles really start to differentiate each other. Uh, PlayStation is going to play pretty well on both devices. There may be a title or two that, that will take advantage of the extra horsepower on the Odroid, uh, but the Pocket Go does surprisingly well with most PlayStation 1 titles. But the Nintendo 64 experience on the Pocket Go is somewhere between poor and unplayable. Uh, it's it's too slow to be enjoyable on, on the games that I've tried. Whereas the Odroid Go, I would put it somewhere between poor and decent, uh, depending on the title. Uh, Mario 64 ran pretty well, nearly full frame rate, but there were some graphical glitches and some sound glitches here and there. Uh, Mortal Kombat ran kind of poorly, but you know, it was still do, you know, usable. Now, Dreamcast, I could not find a working Dreamcast emulator for the Pocket Go, so uh, that's that's a bit of a non-starter. Uh, Dreamcast on the Odroid, again, was a mixed bag. Uh, some of the titles ran great, some of them ran poorly, um, but it's the only way to get Dreamcast in your pocket without stepping up to like a GPD, spending hundreds of dollars on a separate device. So would I recommend the Odroid Go Advance Black Edition? Uh, it's hard to say anything but yes. It's definitely the best performing console in this price range. Uh, it'll run many 64-bit titles from N64 and Dreamcast, even some PSP today, uh, and they're only going to continue to optimize it into the future. Uh, the built-in Wi-Fi is absolutely killer. It is so convenient copying ROMs and images and stuff onto and off the device just, you know, going into your Windows Explorer and moving files around. That is fantastic. The fit and finish may be a little lacking and it could feel like a little bit of a hackery console, uh, but the controls all work very well. I've had no issues with any of the buttons, with the D-pads. Uh, sure, the L2 and R2 may be uh, kind of a little tiny and, and inconvenient, uh, but overall it plays extremely well. So given what this little guy can do in its price range, I'd say the Odroid Go Advance Black Edition is the retro handheld console to beat in 2020. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, drop a comment below. If there's a certain game that you'd like to know how it runs on the Odroid Go Advance or on the Pocket Go, go ahead and drop that as well. I'm happy to take a look. Uh, as always, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button. If you like the rest of my videos, it'd be great if you subscribed. Uh, and I will see you next time.